Hi, I'm Nick Demma. I'm a wildlife research biologist in South Central and Southwest Alaska. The goal of this study is to determine the density and population status of brown bears in Game Management Unit 13A. And so we are conducting a capture mark recite survey, which involves capturing bears, marking them with collars, and then conducting a subsequent aerial survey to visually search for bears. Basically, the proportion of marked bears and number of unmarked bears found during the survey are used to estimate the population. We try to collar as many bears as possible to have a large sample, and uh, the biggest challenge is all the logistics involved. We usually conduct our captures in late April and May, and this is the window when bears are emerging from their winter dens, but it's still early enough where they're not hidden by green foliage as aircraft fly overhead searching for them. First thing in the morning, we check the flying weather conditions, and if we are a go, we pack up gear, load darts with an immobilization drug, and head to the airstrip. There, all aircraft are fueled up, gear is loaded, and we launch multiple search planes in a helicopter with the capture crew. When a bear is found, the search plane relays its location. Oh, 15 feet off the river. Pretty much straight below me. And once the capture crew is on the scene, we evaluate the size of the bear, whether there are any cubs present and any potential hazards such as steep terrain or open water. The darter selects the proper dosage based on the size of the bear and aims for a well-muscled area like the rump or shoulder. With a good hit, the bear can be fully immobilized in just a few minutes. So we really work hard to minimize negative impacts of our capture operations on the animals. Once the bear is immobilized and safe to approach, we land and get started with collaring, measuring, and collecting samples. We examine them from head to tail for general body condition and to look for any abnormalities or injuries. On the ground, we fit a tracking collar on each bear. It emits a VHF signal that we can use to find the bear from an aircraft. It also has a GPS that collects hourly locations a big challenge is keeping the bears from removing their collars. We need to leave enough room for seasonal and annual growth. We also collect blood and hair samples that are later analyzed in a lab for things such as DNA identification. Uh, we can screen for diseases. Uh, we can also evaluate their diets. Brown bears are an important predator of Unit 13 moose and Nelchina caribou. So understanding their diets is one piece of information that helps us sustainably manage all three species. Hunters and guides help in this effort too when they bring in a Unit 13 brown bear to be sealed at a fish and game office. The information we are getting from these collared bears is pretty amazing. On an individual scale, we're observing things like, you know, seasonal movements, habitat use, diet selection, den entrance and exit dates. On a population scale, we can measure survival rates of both adults and cubs and gather information on productivity of the population, such as average age of sows when they have their first litter, number of cubs per litter, and how many years between litters for sows. And these are all critical pieces for understanding the status of the population. When combined with hunter harvest data, wildlife managers can make informed decisions to help ensure a sustainable brown bear population for the future.